Hey there. You know, for a while now, I've wanted to put together a video that talked about note-taking applications because that's obviously one of the things that's drawn me to these e-ink devices is the ability to take notes. And every manufacturer has their own bespoke note-taking app and they can do different things. One of the struggles I've had in kind of thinking about how I would communicate that is there's just so much detail and so much complexity out there that it's easy to get bogged down in that. And I didn't want to try to make it confusing. I'm trying to kind of simplify things. So the process I was eventually able to come up with is kind of a four level process or taxonomy that basically talks about different attributes and starts at kind of a base mod, uh, level of attributes and then builds on that until you get to level four. So the idea is not to say whether something's good or bad or better or worse, but the idea is to say uh, less complicated to most complicated in terms of the features that are available. So I hope that makes sense. So basically what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go through how I define those levels and what manufacturers I generally think fall into those levels. Again, with the caveat, that more complicated isn't necessarily better. Um, in fact, it ultimately really comes down to your own use case. Some of the more complicated ones bring a lot more features and are a lot more flexible, but some of the simpler ones are a lot easier to engage and the learning curve is smaller. And if they meet all the things that you need to do, those might be better options for you. So this is really just about trying to describe this note-taking world and how the various manufacturers fall into that world. Um, and so hopefully that helps. And so why don't we go ahead and get on in and we'll start defining level one. Okay, we start with level one, which I also term the basics. And these are features that every device has. Um, there might be some variation in terms of what the devices offer, but the basic functionality is available on virtually every modern e-ink note-taking app that you can find out there. So we'll start off with multiple pen styles. So this is where you can select a certain type of uh, pen style, and then that gets reflected onto the writing canvas. So that could be a, a pencil, it could be um, a ball pen, um, a brush, it could be a highlighter or marker, and there's others as well. Um, the number and the quality of these pen styles might vary from device to device, but they all fundamentally have them. Um, so that's definitely a unifying element for all of these devices. Just as uh, in a similar vein, I should say, are the eraser functions. So, you know, most devices have a stroke eraser, an area eraser, or a thing where you can erase an entire layer. Um, having multiple eraser functions is the norm for all devices. Templates. Um, so templates are basically an image that you write on top of. You can't actually alter the template itself. You can just write on top of it. And all devices have this. Um, some have uh, more templates than others. Some are maybe of a higher quality, um, but everyone has a fairly robust selection of templates to choose from. And many devices also allow you to uh, download PDFs um, and put your own templates onto the device. That might vary, but what doesn't vary is that uh, natively, these note-taking apps have their own set of templates to choose from. There's a lasso function where you can take any type of writing or object that you have on the screen and you can circle it. And every device has this function that allows you to uh, copy, paste, and move whatever it is that you've selected. So that's universal. There might be some additional features and we'll get to that later, but these basic features are pretty much in any device that you can find. Uh, almost all devices can export into PDFs or PNG files. There might be other options as well, but they all have this base one. The only exception that I'm aware of is I believe the Kindle doesn't do PNG files, but they certainly do PDF files. Every device uses a basic file folder structure. So the file is your notebook. So you create a new notebook that's in its own file. You can have multiple notebooks and you can organize those notebooks and folders. I mean, it's pretty straightforward and all devices have that ability. They also have the ability to move things around if you don't like how things are set up over time. Um, so that's also a universal function. You can rename notebooks. That's uh, pretty universal. And finally, every device manufacturer has the ability 
a cloud service that you can sign on to and all of your notebooks are backed up onto the cloud. I don't believe there's any exceptions in that regard. So all these are attributes that every device that has an e-ink note-taking application has. So let's talk about a couple manufacturers that I consider to be level one devices. Okay, so what devices are at level one? Well, I think this is where the Amazon Kindle, the Scribe sits. Um, Amazon has all the features of a level one device and not really a lot beyond that. I do uh, would like to point out though that Amazon does have some easy uh, send to email features um, as it relates to notes. So that's a notable uh, feature beyond the basic set that Amazon has, but I think it's the quintessential level one device. Um, and remember, again, just to emphasize, it doesn't mean that it's any worse than the other devices. In fact, some people may find that simplicity to be what they're looking for. I'm just talking about the complexity of the note-taking options and the tools inside that application. The other device I would point to, and this one's a little bit stranger, is the Kobo, and that could be the Ellipsa 2E, that could be the new Cobra Libra Color that was just released. Um, in many ways, I think it fits well within level one, um, but there's a couple other things to kind of note. So it does have um, the ability to convert handwriting to text. That's something we tend to see um, at higher levels. That's one attribute that it has that's kind of beyond level one. It does have the ability to send individual documents to either Dropbox or to Google Drive. Um, but here's where it gets a little strange. So it has this other functionality called advanced notebooks. And actually some of the things that can happen in advanced notebooks, other manufacturers don't have at all. Um, so how do we kind of wrestle with that? Well, the way that Kobo handles their notebook function is they have regular notebooks and they have advanced notebooks and they don't connect with each other. So for example, if you wanted to have your own notebook and what you wanted to use a template, you can do that in normal notebooks, but you can't do that in advanced notebooks. So advanced notebooks kind of become this kind of demo that's off on the side. It's really nice. I do enjoy uh, working with advanced notebooks just you know for the novelty of it, but it's not really integrated to their predominant note-taking app. And for that reason, um, I kind of discount those as it relates to um, you know, what level the device goes in. But um, if you want to include those, I'm not even sure how those would fit at the other levels. Um, but generally speaking, their basic notebook function is pretty much uh, belongs in the level one category. Okay, so now we move on to level two, which I call the next layer, which is a little bit of a pun, because one of the major features of any device at level two or above is the ability to incorporate layers. So in a sense, we kind of had layers even at level one, where the template was one layer and then your writing surface was another. The difference here going forward is now you can have multiple writing surfaces and most um, you know, allow you to have up to five of these levels. What that allows you to do is you can actually interact with a layer without interacting with the other layers. You can erase a layer perhaps and ignore the others. You can hide a layer in many cases. So that's basically uh, what that functionality is and level two devices and above all have that. We can now see converting handwriting to text. Now this is done a little bit differently between devices, but all have some form of conversion of handwriting to text. And of course, as always, the quality may vary, but the functionality is now starting to appear in devices at this point forward. You have the ability just to insert text boxes, which are fairly straightforward into your note-taking app. Um, the SuperNote is the one exception to that. Um, but everyone else that we'll mention going forward does have this ability. Okay, at level two, BigMe pretty much stands here alone. Here's some features they have in addition to their level one and level two attributes. Um, they do have more ways to share files um, because they have Google Play. And so that whatever apps you download are potential apps that you can use within the notebook to share your files. So that, that does open up a lot of possibilities. Um, it does have integration with Google Drive. What's a little weird about it though, is that it does require you to have a BigMe account in order to link to the Google Drive account. So 
I'm not quite clear why that is. Perhaps it's because instead of the device linking to Google Drive, it's the cloud services linking to Google Drive. You know, I'm just not sure, but that is unusual when other devices don't require that. Um, you can add shapes into notes, and these are basic shapes like a triangle or a square. Um, and then it has a larger canvas. So what I mean by that is that um, all devices, of course, have the canvas, which is the size of the screen. And if you want additional pages, you can just add additional pages, and it's it's pretty straightforward. But what if you didn't want to add additional page? You just want to write beyond the screen, as it were. Maybe you're doing mind mapping or what have you. Well, um, what that means is basically extending the canvas. And so you could either you know zoom in or zoom out and scroll, and that's what the Big Me allows you to do. So instead of having the normal canvas, you can actually make it bigger, uh, either you know one by one, one by two, or two by one, or two by two. Those options are all available um, if you're interested in that. Okay, now we move on to level three, and this is where we start to introduce what I'm calling some intermediate tools. And perhaps none of those are more important than the ability to tag or identify with keywords, those are roughly synonymous terms, depending on your manufacturer, that you can then search. So now not only do you create these notebooks, um, and of course you have different notebooks with different names, but you have a way within a notebook for identifying key things that you want to recall later without having to try to search for it manually. So that's the advantage of these tags um, or keywords. So a really important step, I think, in the complexity of note-taking devices here at level three. You also have the ability to, uh, in many cases, to view notes online. This is an extension of the cloud services that were talked about at level one. Um, but in this case, uh, devices add the additional ability, whether it's via a web portal or via a, a desktop application, to be able to view your notes outside of the device itself. Um, there is one notable exception to that, Mobiscribe does not have that ability. And finally, at level three, you do have additional lasso functionality. So instead of just the basics that we covered at level one, which is copying and pasting and moving, now there are some additional functions that these devices have, and those vary a little bit um, depending on the device. So here at level three, um, there's two manufacturers I'll call attention to. The first will be Mobiscribe. Now, in addition to having most of the functionality of level one, two, and three, Mobiscribe does allow you to add shapes and notes just like the Big Me did. Um, it allows you to insert some links and images. Um, and it does have the ability, similar to Kobo, where you can send um, notebooks to, in this case, Dropbox or Evernote, and that's integrated into the UI. Um, it does have one feature that is uh, pertains mostly to level four devices, which is the ability to search on handwriting. Um, so that's the one kind of unique twist, but for the most part, that device belongs, and I'm talking about the wave or the wave color, belongs here at level three. The other manufacturer is remarkable. Um, and in addition, again, to the core attributes of a one, two, and three device, it also allows a larger canvas, similar to what we talked about with Big Me. Um, it has line perfection, which is kind of cool. And you can create uh, check boxes, which is actually unique to that particular device. So finally, we find ourselves at level four, which I'm referring to as advanced tools. And this is the highest level in this taxonomy. The first thing I'll call to is search on handwriting. Um, so at this level, you have the ability, without having previously converted your handwriting to text, to be able to search on that uh, handwriting. So it's basically something that happens on the background that is to say the conversion of handwriting to text as you're doing a search. Very helpful. Uh, for example, let's say that you want to search for something that you didn't think ahead, you know, in terms of putting on any type of a tag, then you might be able to find that uh, just by searching on your handwriting. So it's a very sophisticated and unique tool. There's additional specialized search functionality um, in devices at this level, and I could go into a lot of detail on this, but I just produced a video um, on that, and it goes into all the search functionalities of devices in this level. So you might wanna check that out if you're curious about all of that. Just look in my channel for a video that has the word search in it, and that's the one um, that talks uh, about that detail.
And finally, there are robust and integrated share options. So up to now, everyone has cloud services. Everyone uh, or a number of uh, manufacturers have the ability to send um, you know, a, uh, a file you know, to a particular service or through an email. What's added at this level is you have the ability to integrate with other services and to do automatic syncing um, of notes. So for example, Google Drive is probably one of the best examples of this where devices can be set up um, and as soon as you can either initiate the sync or whenever you're on Wi-Fi, those files will automatically sync. You don't have to uh, manually do that or go into each file. It happens um, across all notebooks. So that is a really handy feature that's available here at level four. So finally, we have our two last manufacturers here at level four. And I'll start off with the SuperNote. So in addition to all the uh, levels that we've talked about, uh, you can insert links with the SuperNote. They have headers, which is a very specialized um, and unique form of organizing notes within a notebook. And it has a two finger eraser function, which I find particularly helpful. It's not foolproof, but it does work most of the time and it helps with the flow of writing. And then there's a star marking system, which is kind of similar to a tag, but it's a very specific type of tag, if you will, that you create by creating a star. Um, I like them a little bit better than tags simply because you can add or delete them a lot easier. Uh, but tags have the advantage of being able to have multiple different tags based on the text that you create. So the star marking system only has the one symbol, at least for SuperNote. The other manufacturer, and I would argue the most complicated notebook uh, functionality of all these device manufacturers is books. So in addition, again, to all the levels that we've talked about, they also feature a larger canvas that we've seen with some other devices at this point. It can add in shapes and notes, but it is notable that the selection of shapes and the formatting of those shapes is the most robust implementation of any device manufacturer out there. You can also insert links and images. That's another thing that we've seen with some of these other devices, but again, Books actually t does it uh, you know, on speed and has more options than, than we've seen up to this point. It has a specialized functionality. I guess it's somewhat analogous to the two finger erase function that we talked about with SuperNote, but this is called strike through erase, where you scribble on uh, writing or an object or text and then the device erases um, it automatically. So that's kind of cool in lieu of using an eraser function. It can leave artifacts much like two finger erase with SuperNote. It's not perfect, but when it works, it's a pretty neat functionality. And then finally, um, there is shape perfection. So you can say, draw a triangle, draw a circle. And if you hold it down, it will make the line perfect. And you have the ability to fill in that object and with you know, any type color of your choice. And that actually is very unique to the books device. Okay, so there you have it. Just a couple observations that might be obvious, but I think they're worth calling out. You know, this kind of leveling system that I've created is not perfect. We can see in the examples flaws where maybe a device had something that was above their level or didn't have something below their level. But generally speaking, I think the, the thought process works. There's also nothing inherently um, you know, true about the structure that I designed. It's really just meant to describe the world as it exists now. It could be a year from now as these device manufacturers add new features or whatever changes that might be in store that this whole kind of taxonomy doesn't make any sense anymore. It's just, we'll just have to wait and see. But for right now, as we look at the devices out there, I think generally speaking, uh, with exceptions of course, that it does do a good job of kind of laying out the differences between these note-taking apps. And I'm hoping that that came forward to you as well. As always, if you have any questions, please put those in the comments. If you think there are really glaring admissions, and I wouldn't be surprised if there were, please pop those into the comments as well. And uh, otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoy and learn something from this. And until next time, I will see you then.